Hi, in this short, we are going to talk about first fundamental theorem of homomorphism of groups or rings or anything, but I will concentrate on groups to start with. Okay, many of you would have gone through a proof, but very rarely teachers or textbooks say how the theorem is useful. Later, somewhere you may use it, but what is the real purpose of the theorem? That's what we want to talk about. So what does it say? Suppose G is a group, K is another group and this is a group homomorphism. Maybe let us say G, G1 and G2 group homomorphism and let kernel of F equal to K then K is a normal subgroup of G1. Then what does it say is F of G1 is isomorphic to G1 modulo K. This is what the first part of theorem of group homomorphism says. So, what is the, the use? We are going to talk about two uses, but today we will use, talk about the first use. First use is it allows us to identify the quotient groups. So, what does it mean? Suppose G is a group, H is a normal subgroup then we know we can form the quotient group. Okay? This is a quotient group. But we want to identify. What do I mean by identify? That means I have to find another group G, G1 I said that okay, G mod K is isomorphic to G1. G1 is already known group that means I did identified. This is what it mean by identification. How does it help? This tells us if I have G mod K, first, okay, I have some intuitive reasons to expect this isomorphic to G1. I, okay, this is the expectation. Okay, why do I expect? Please read my article on quotient groups and quotient rings. Okay, yeah, it, they are available in the usual 4D space. Dot mtts. Dot org. Dot in. Dot ea look for the question okay you will see that so for some okay intuitive reasons I, I think G mod H is isomorphic to G1 but I want to prove it rigorously how do I do that that's what it does so what it says is I have only how to find a group homomorphism from G to G1 which is on to and so that kernel of your is H then first fundamental theorem says G mod kernel of F that is G mod H is isomorphic to F of G, but that is G1. So, we proved it. You understand that? So, how do I do that? Let us look at one or two examples. That is what it is. And if you have seen my uh, shots on VCOSAT, that will help you. So, start with R2 under standard addition. Then, let us look at my group okay, K which is the uh, y axis and that is x equal to 0 right ok then we have seen that all the quotients are lines parameterized by this point ok yeah. x equal to constant correct so I would think R2 mod k should be isomorphic to R with under addition expect. How do I prove that? It simply says look for a group homomorphism R2 to R so that this must be group homomorphism so that the kernel should be the y axis namely x equal to 0. So, what is the obvious choice? Let us look at f of x y equal to x itself. Okay, this is a group homomorphism and kernel of f is my k right therefore I know R2 modulo K is isomorphic to R this is one example let us look at second example ok let us look at my this equal to G my K equal to the circle group set of all Z and C so that mod Z equal to 1 
Okay, we already saw the cosets. Cosets are this is point is removed. The cosets are circles with centered thing. Okay, so each circle this since the center is fixed, it only depends on R that R is in zero infinity, which is positive real. Right, so I expect G mod K should be isomorphic to R plus positive real under multiplication. This is expectation. Okay, this is my guess. How do I prove that? So I have to look for a group form as multiplicative thing from C star to my R plus. Okay, under addition, under multiplication. What should be that? So the kernel should be Z. So if I start with any Z here, right? I want it to go here, and the kernel should be mod Z equal to one. So obvious guess is F of Z equal to mod Z. Then this is a group homomorphism, and this is on to, right? And the kernel of F is precisely my the circle group K, right? And hence I know C star modulo S one is isomorphic to R plus under star. I will stop with the third example. My G is now GL two R R two by two invertible matrices. My K is SL two or all determinant one matrices, right? So the then K is a normal subgroup of G. This is very easy. Okay, use the multiplicative property of determinants to show that K is normal in G. Therefore, G mod K. Notice that we again we know what are the cosets. The cosets are so coset of A K is set of all B in G L two R. So that determinant of B equal to determinant of A, and determinant of A is an R star, right? Therefore, I expect this must be isomorphic to R star. So how do I do that? Again, the same trick. Let us look at from G to R star, so that f of A going to determinant of A. So this is a group homomorphism on to Right, because give me any R, then I can take alpha one. Okay, therefore this is on two. Right, and what is the kernel of F? Kernel of F is precisely SL two R. Therefore, what do I know? By first fundamental theorem, G L two R by SL two R is isomorphic to. R plus and multiplication. So there are a lot more examples. Please refer to my article on quotient groups and quotient rings, where you will see the power. But remember, there is a second application of first fundamental theorem homomorphism. What is it? Wait for the next episode.